Still a fourth type of Marian icon can be found on another capital from Dvin. We, this is the one we started with. Uh, <coughs> now we see it in color. Mm -hmm. Uh, so again, it's from uh, Vertanes' own church. He must have seen it. The mother is enthroned in a rather comfortable armchair. She holds the child in a cuddling gesture, with bringing both arms around him. And this can be compared to the uh, Sinai icon uh, that is now in Kiev. You see, she has both arms around the child. And more could be said about these icons, these particular uh, <clears throat> icons of the Mother of God. Uh, but the significant thing is that in Armenia in pre-Arab times, we find as rich a diversity of icons of the Mother of God, even if they are copies in stone, as we have in the collection of St. Catherine's Monastery in Sinai, which is, after all, the richest collection of icons in the world. Armenia was in the center of this development, as it was in the center of the development of a theology of icons, uh, as uh, you will discover in reading uh, Vertanes. <coughs> The frequent representation of individual saints on Armenian stele might also be connected with panel-painted icons. <clears throat> Gregory mentions their role in church decoration, replacing the obscene pagan images of Anahit and her companions. And he mentions specifically uh, Gregory and uh, Terdat, uh, we have St. Terdat on this side, and I think Gregory on this side, uh, and uh, uh, John the Baptist on this one. <coughs> so, icons of uh, the, these particular saints are, of course, popular in Armenia. They are not uh, common to the rest of the uh, Christian world but icons of single standing saints in uh, frontal poses uh, are very common in early Christian icons. And here are two examples from uh, the collection at uh, Sinai. Finally, <clears throat> I would like to ask about the manner of venerating these icons in early Armenia. For the veneration of these icons also conformed to the use of uh, icons outside of Armenia. In early Christian times, icon veneration was very different from viewing and admiring the paintings in a museum gallery. Icon veneration was a matter of physical gestures, and the key expressions in Greek are proskinesis and aspasmos, which mean prostration, you prostrate yourself before the painting, and touching, aspasmos, touching and kissing it. <clears throat> Vertanes' argument in defense of icons is based uh, not on historical pre precedent, but on the actual practice of the church in his time. And in this context, <clears throat> he appeals to the Armenian liturgy. He says, now by the grace of Christ, we can call on another witness from New Testament times. He sees his own time, his current history, as be belonging to New Testament times, you see. <coughs> and pardon me. For we behold the book of the Gospels. We behold the book of the Gospels painted with gold and silver and even bound with ivory and purple parchment. Here are the ivory bindings of the Yechmiadzin Gospel, the only uh, set of ivory book covers 
that are still attached to a manuscript. There are many uh, such covers, but in fragments mostly, and detached from the books that they belonged to. Uh, Vertanes goes on in this vein. He says, when we fall down in veneration before the gospel or kiss it, we do not venerate the ivory and the pigment imported from overseas from barbarian lands, but we venerate the ver word of the Savior which is written upon the parchment. So too the old and the young who ran before the Lord of glory seated on an ass carrying uh, olive and palm branches praised him and threw themselves down before him. They did not venerate the ass, but Christ, the Son of God, who was seated on the ass. Although the early Armenian uh, icons have not survived on wood, the stone relief versions of these subjects are excellent documentation when they are linked with Vertana's text. That these Im images framed like icons with their subjects facing forward in static non-narrative poses, that these icons existed on wood panels in Armenia is beyond question. <clears throat> for for Vertanes, Armenia's tradition of sacred images was the strongest argument in defense of sacred images. The churches he saw were full of paintings of the life of Christ, which is supported by partial remains in seven early Armenian churches. <clears throat> the manuscripts he saw were painted on purple parchments, uh, <clears throat> which was a way of uh, embellishing the Gospels in, in the early Christian period. His adversaries themselves admitted that the images were very ancient in Armenia, and they made a slander that the images had been introduced by the mad King Pap in uh, 369 to 374. Vertanes maintains rather that the icons were even earlier, and they came from the Greeks. It, if the icon, uh, uh, right. Armenia was importing painted wooden icons from the rest of the Christian world, which uh, Vertanes refers to vaguely as the Greeks, the Hellenistic world. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> it is the iconoclasts who were uh, guilty of innovation. Uh, by the start of the seventh century, the use of sacred images was certainly a deeply entrenched tradition across the Near East from Alexandria to Armenia. Thank you very much for your attention.